Hello, Seawolves, and welcome back to uh, the show. A pretty crazy uh, day and night here in Amsterdam, I can tell you. I'm coming to you straight from the smoldering ashes of whatever it was that happened uh, last night. Pretty crazy over here. But fortunately, there is the crazy free world of uh, sailing, and I say we must. It's our holy task to enjoy it all together with something delicious in your cup or in your beautiful sea wolf mug if that just so happens to be what you have it in and are you ready to enjoy it with me here we go three two one mm. Oof. yeah that is some real true epic enjoyment and speaking of epic enjoyment close crossing was a ship from Oldendorf Hanna Oldendorf looks like a bulk carrier. I asked the captain to change his course 30 degrees to starboard. It needed a little bit of convincing, but he did, and if he hadn't, it would have been damn close. What an evening sky, huh? Normal speed for a biker. As if we were, what, didn't have enough stress, and this adds to the stress. Speaking with a with a guy, and whew, half an hour of checking, convincing him, get out of my way. I'm a sailboat. I have right away. The uh, the race that we're all so mightily interesting in, the Van de Globe, is getting more and more uh, interesting. I want to dive right in right away uh, today. Let me bring you into the screen here. I'm uh, very happy, first of all, that at least so far, Jean Le Cam has done exactly what I talked about yesterday. Just, I mean, look at the uh, beautiful uh, straightness of his track so far i mean this line is straighter than any line that we've seen in the entire race uh, uh so far now uh, obviously he's aiming a little bit too low so he's heading for spain that's probably because of the wind direction right so uh, he's just optimally sailing the wind and i think as the wind direction changes a little bit he might you know actually have to head down a little bit more so that means there is another jibe uh, in his future if it goes down like this, but I still hold to the prediction that at least until he gets very close to the coast of uh, either Spain or Portugal depending on you know where he's aiming exactly He's going to uh, you know keep reframing from making any maneuvers and he's going to go as straight a path as he probably possibly uh, uh, can and won a little distance again 532 nautical miles behind the leader yesterday it was 550 something so at least another 20 nautical miles won on the rest of the field which is kind of uh, nice uh, uh, to see then of course for the rest of the leaders uh, right now Charlie Dalin uh, again or still um, in the lead but if we look at this you know the position especially of the first uh, three with both uh, uh, of course uh, uh, Boris there and of course Lewis Burton still very strong above there 
you know, if you look at it visually, of course, the first inclination would be to say that Lewis is still probably uh, in the best position right now, especially uh, since we have this kind of, uh, um, well, you can see this kind of blue line there, which is, well, it's not, not a doldrum, but it, it's an area there near the Cape Finisterre, which sometimes has the same kind of effect with some lower uh, winds. Now, it doesn't seem to really be affecting them heavily, but you do see that there are some lighter winds there uh, around, uh, around Finisterre, uh, let's say, that they will try to avoid. So you can you know, understand if they're going to try to not get too close uh, to the coast uh, there, because then that can uh, become a problem. And of course, this is a prediction, it's still two days away, so we have some reliability now, but you know, you still never really know how it's going to, um, you know, go down, especially in this uh, particular race. But for those three, you know, right now, again, a very bad aim. So they're literally aiming, you know, away from uh, uh, the finish. So again, making more miles in order to get there. And if we look at the field right now, we see basically that we have uh, Jean Le Cam, and uh, a little bit higher, uh, Jean-Carl Pedotte, who are kind of the two who are right now aimed more or less at the finish. So they are the only two in this entire hunter group that isn't literally uh, wasting miles, let's say, even though some of the others are, you know, getting some speed in return, they are still negating some of that extra speed by taking a longer route uh, to do it. Like I said, we're so close to the finish that every mile extra you know, you have to put some significant speed up against that in order to make good. And if you make a mistake, there is not a whole lot of space anymore to make good on that. So one really bad mistake really can uh, cost you. And to kind of give an uh, example of that. So if we actually look at, uh, at the lines that they're taking here to, to kind of work out this example a little bit. So we see that the leaders here all heading basically to Lisbon, Portugal right now. They're not really going to the finish, which of course is here. Now, obviously they're, you know, they're making some distance in the direction of the finish somewhat, uh, but they are, you know, literally, if you look at it quite literally, taking the long way around, right? They are making extra miles right now in order to uh, get somewhere. However, if we look to, um, you know, kind of the other uh, uh, group there, let's take another color actually for that, we see the same thing. So they are kind of aiming north. Again, possibly not going in the direction of the finish, you know, over here. Then we are, then we are sort of left over with the, with the two guys in the end where we see here that uh, uh, both Jean and uh, who else did we have here again? Oh yeah, Jean-Carlo Pedotta. They're the only two that are more or less straight going. So it's not only that they are both having, you know, quite good speed right now. I mean, 18.9, Jean is doing 17.9. So really good speed, but it's really good speed straight for uh, the finish. So they are gaining miles at the highest speed possible, which at this distance to the finish is very significant. No matter the fact that, you know, we have the, the three other gents, of course, still with a good distance uh, uh, in front, 500 nautical miles, but it isn't a whole lot, right? And so especially right now, if we look at the speed, so we see, uh, uh, we see right now, uh, Lewis doing 19.3, we see Charlie doing 18.3, and we see Boris Herman doing 19.9. So good speeds, but some of that is also very speedily going in the wrong direction, right? And so you have to kind of weigh those things against um, each other. And, uh, and so it's not so easy to really see how that is going to work out exactly. But it's very cool to kind of see those three real strategies here where we have kind of, kind of these two, so Jean-Claude Pedata and Jean Lecam, doing this thing where they go as straight for the finish as possible seemingly. And then we have one group that is saying, we're going more north to find more wind. And so their, their track is going to be, of course, that they're gonna go up and then, you know, kind of in. Whilst we see down here, another strategy of going more closer and then likely up and in. And so it'll be very interesting to see which one of those two kind of uh, pans out against uh, path number three, which looks more like a straight path uh, in, or, you know, maybe in John's case, going a little bit lower and then, you know, being forced to make the same uh, uh, way up. Now, I'm not saying that, of course, the, the two in back have 
some kind of great chance to win the race here. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, I'm just saying it's interesting compare to compare those three uh, strategies, uh, let's say. And I still think that though, looking at this particular picture, my prediction is that despite the faster speed of the foilers, we saw that during the start also that they were making a lot more miles and ended up all of them, including Hugo Boss, including Shirelle, the two big favorites, behind John Lecam. That's something nobody expected in the beginning. And I'm just saying, I think we would be wise to expect something not the same. He's not going to get ahead of them unless something really crazy happens. But I still think that, you know, he's won about 30 nautical miles over the last 24 hours or so. And I think he's going to continue that. He still has something like you know, 48, maybe a little bit more hours uh, uh, to go. So he might win another 100 or so if he gets lucky, maybe even more. He could also get unlucky and, you know, lose it again if the foilers get some very fortunate situations. But it looks like they are all kind of going uh, a little bit of a longer way around and that that might negate uh, itself. And it's just interesting to observe uh, what that will do, especially with the history of what happened last time in this exact same uh, uh, location with John especially of course knowing this location really really well because he finished here in so many races before so much experience with this area so I'm just very curious to see how uh, the old wolf is going to uh, get himself uh, through here then behind there the battle between uh, Maxime uh, Sorel and Armel Trippon still uh, you know continuously getting closer uh, and closer right now they are more or less still the same amount of uh, miles away so uh, Armel hasn't really won a lot or you might say that he won a bit but then uh, Maxime got out of this kind of lower wind area and is doing some better speed now 14.3 while uh, Armel is being a little bit slower so he's doing 14.3 same speed right now but his 24 hour is a little low 11.3 Oh, actually, Maxime is actually 10, so he's actually still lower there. Um, but anyway, the distance is, you know, there's one mile difference. So I don't know if he either won one mile or lost one mile, but I think Maxime was slower, sped up a little bit. Armel was a bit slower and is now speeding up again. And so, you know, for, for those two, it's also interesting that, uh, you know, we can really see the rest of the course in one not too far zoomed out uh, uh, screen so uh, you know with both of them about a thousand miles uh, b behind the leader and uh, they're saying Lewis has still 730 nautical miles so they're about 1700 miles still uh, uh, to go for them so they have a number of days my money is still saying that Armel is going to overtake him but no doubt Maxime is going to give it everything to uh, hold on to that uh, position so we'll see how it goes uh, Clarice Kramer having a, a great uh, a speedy time now through the trades, doing excellent speed. She's really running away with it actually, really nice average. And uh, and yeah, I think that uh, she's, she's, you know, if, if nothing crazy happens, she is just absolutely uh, assured that 12 uh, place knock on wood. Of course, I don't want to jinx anything. Um, then we have uh, Romain Atanasio, now finally really through the doldrums, uh, it seems. His speed finally over eight knots. He's doing 10 now, not super fast, but with, an, with a 24 average of 5.6. So that was definitely still the doldrums. And now uh, last four hours, 7.5 and the, his 30 minutes. Uh, average 10 it's definitely uh, clear that he is quickly speeding up now with right behind him Jeremy actually kind of running into the doldrums doesn't seem to have really affected his speed so far as he's you know around 10 knots over the last 24 hours very steady and that's the same speed he's doing now so a bit down from his last 24 hours which was like 16 or so so he's slow but not that slow and let's see for a minute here yeah, the doldrum's definitely going to still stay a bit open, so he, he won't have a very good passage. So, um, yeah, probably going to take him at least 24 hours or so to get uh, uh, through there and then uh, start restart the hunt uh, again for that next uh, position for him. And uh, uh, the group behind there, we see, by the way, so I made a mistake, which I mean, many of you pointed out. And by the way, thank you, uh, like when I get things wrong, it's good for you. Like sometimes people say, wow, some of the con uh, comments are sometimes kind of brutal. I really don't mind, right? I mean, if you're gonna give some unfunded ad hominem insults or whatever, I will always 
you know, immediately uh, delete those. Any politics in the comments here is just not going to happen. This is not the place for that. There's plenty of places in the world uh, uh, for that. But, you know, constructive things or if you just want to point out like, hey, you said this, but actually this other thing happened and maybe that's there, that's fine, right? I mean, I can take it, we can all take it and, uh, you know, nobody is perfect. So, uh, yesterday somebody pointed out to me that I actually mistakenly said that Kojiro was ahead of Pip at one point uh, because I was actually looking at the prediction lines, which was apparently confusing me. So I checked that back and you were absolutely uh, right on that. So um, I amend my analysis of that situation, but I stand with my uh, idea that Kojira has a very, very fast boat, faster than uh, many of the others uh, around uh, there. He's matching speed with most of them and being a little faster than, uh, than some of them also uh, at this point. Uh, namely, for example, uh, Pip was doing 11 now and he's doing almost 15. Same for uh, Dida Costa, also a bit slower. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with four really quite fast uh, skippers there who have boats that are really suited for these circumstances. And um, so far he's doing really well. So I'm not saying absolutely he will take everybody, but uh, it would definitely be a very cool surprise. And I think it is possible, you know, if he really pushes his boat, in, on paper, I would say he definitely has, should have, let's say, the fastest boat in this particular group, uh, I think. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how it, uh, how it works out. Um, Pip, by the way, some of you asked about the allergy. So yeah, she, she published a video about the allergy, but seems to be uh, okay uh, now. Like, uh, it's, a, it's a nuisance, but not uh, the end of the world, uh, let's say. Then uh, we have, of course, uh, Miranda Marin and very almost hidden in blue there, Manuel Cosin, and we have uh, uh, Clement de Girard there, still stuck. So uh, it's unfortunate because we talked about that, like, I think 36 hours ago of them getting into this uh, real wind hole that kind of, as soon as they went in, it kind of blew up, got a bit larger, and it seems they're really properly uh, stuck in there. And if you look at the prediction, it also really doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It only seems to be growing. So uh, as far as it looks in here, they're going to be stuck in there at least till Wednesday morning. So at least another 30 hours or so. Really unfortunate uh, uh, for them. On the other hand, that might give uh, Alexa and Ari all the way in the back here a chance to uh, maybe uh, gain some miles again um, on them. Another day they might be just past the Falklands by the time that they really get out of there and who knows you know who knows what happens maybe they get stuck again maybe this group this this five uh, you know get closer to each other uh, than we might have uh, expected you know you never know it could happen but um, you know, both Ari and um, and uh, uh, Alexia uh, you know doing uh, doing good coming around the Cape uh, uh, nicely and so uh, yeah that's that's basically the analysis for uh, uh, today, not much uh, happening uh, in the AC. We're waiting for the next weekend for uh, the next uh, races. So uh, all I can say is uh, actually um, after taping this, I'm rushing off to the marina because finally the time is here. Tomorrow my boat is going out of the water. So uh, a lot of filming for Solo, the upcoming series about solo sailing and you know adjusting your boat to be more suited for solo sailing and all that stuff. So looking forward to sharing that with you soon. And I have a busy day with a lot of preparation and filming ahead. So I'm looking forward to that. So with that, thank you all very much for watching. Have a good, safe day and night, no matter where you are, no matter what kind of craziness is going on. And that would be the moment that the uh, battery of my wireless mic uh, gave out. So uh, obviously I'm uh, telling all of you to make sure to uh, give the video a thumbs up. And uh, that I'm really looking forward to uh, showing you this new, uh, the first episode of Solo that I'm making. And uh, saying to you all, have a really nice day. See you tomorrow.